At this point it may be wise to take a step back and consider what we have seen up to this juncture. We have seen through different clips of H.G. Wells, the shape of things to come, that nations are bad because they produce wars that send humanity backwards in terms of development and progress by brigands that pillage weaker nations. On the other hand, there were people portrayed in the film that were frustrated by the current order because it prevented them from pursuing science that man could use to cure the ills of their sick society and establish some form of utopia on earth. A utopia that Cabal and Friend thought was best served by the coming of some form of technocracy and the sweeping away of the old order of evil nation-states. A utopia where there is no more bosses, authority and people work together. When you add to this the establishment of the futuristic every town built with machines, amongst other things, you are reminded very much of the Venus Project. Whilst we ponder this let's also keep at the back of our minds that H.G. Wells was very heavily influenced by Freemasonry. His film seems a very strong propaganda psyop for the New World Order. Now at this point, it would be appropriate to find out a little bit more about what a technocracy is that describes every town very well and whether the Venus Project fits this description. From examination of Wikipedia, perhaps the first occurrence of the word technocracy was by William Howard Smythe to describe a government made up of scientists and engineers in the United States in 1919. Another person called Howard Scott, connected with the technocracy movement, stated technocracy was not related to the concepts of scientific management, as technocrats were not concerned with making human toil more efficient but instead wished to eliminate it in favor of automation. In other words, getting rid of work altogether which is a major plank of the DeFresco technological organization model. From looking further at Wikipedia it becomes apparent that there were different movements in the last century in different parts of the world. One of these, interestingly, is Technocracy Incorporated formed in 1933, which Jake Fresco was a card-carrying member. Now of immediate interest is their symbol a monad that comes in red and silver, red and white as well as black and white. They all symbolize balance between consumption of resources and production. You may ask what is a monad? According to Wikipedia it says the following, 1. Monad Greek philosophy a term used by ancient philosophers Pythagoras, Parmenides, Xenophanes, Plato, Aristotle, and Plotinus as a term for God or the first being or the totality of all being. Let's stop here for a few moments. This monad is connected with deity in particular the totality of all being. We'll come to that later. The mention of Pythagoras is also very interesting since he set up his own mystery occult school in Italy and features in Masonic writings. Aristotle is also of interest because Philip's Exeter Academy, a school for the elite, uses an academic approach based on his teachings called the Harkness Training Method after the name of its donator Edward S. Harkness. Harkness tied the donation to his request that this form of teaching be introduced to the school. Harkness was also an associate of the Illuminati Rockefeller family. Persons trained in this method include Dan Brown, George W. Bush, Chris Hughes, co-founder of the social networking site Facebook, online technology guru, connected with Barack Obama presidential campaign. At this point you may be thinking I am digressing and going off subject. You're right so let me move on. 2. Monism, the concept of one essence in the metaphysical and theological theory 3. Monad Gnosticism, the most primal aspect of God in Gnosticism the technocracy monad, representing balance, is the official symbol of technocracy, incorporated. From these three points the words deity, totality of all being, one essence, balance and Gnosticism are connected with this generic symbol. The monad symbol clearly has some connections with the occult mystery schools. Symbols, as we know, are very important to the occult Illuminati. They both reveal and conceal to different people. It also has, in addition, 
Some similarity to the yin-yang symbol that represent monism all as one and pantheism all as God and hence inherently opposes Christianity. This interestingly reminds me of Peter Joseph's introduction piece on the Zeitgeist movement orientation that states in one breath that it doesn't believe in divisionary notions like religion yet states that we are all one organism. I digress again, I know. But if Peter Josephs is going to be deceitful and leave subtle undercurrents of both Marxism and theosophy in his videos I going do the opposite and call it spade a spade.